For many of us who play Star Wars The Old Republic, and by many of us I mean me, the eight class stories, or origin stories now, are the best content in the game. They range from good to excellent, and everyone has a favorite. And in any discussion about those favorites, you inevitably hear how the Empire stories are better than the Republic stories. Some people even go so far as to say they can't finish a Republic story. It's just so boring. Now, certainly not everyone feels that way, but the sentiment is common enough that it got me wondering. Are Empire stories better? And if they are, why? This is Christina, and today it's Empire vs. Republic. Beware spoilers for the eight origin stories. We won't be going into great detail, but there will be some spoilers, so if you haven't played them and you want to, turn back now. Alright, having said that, let's get into this. Of course, which story is your favorite is completely subjective. It's based on many factors like companions, voice acting, amount of choice, romances, and so much more. We are in no way trying to name a definitive best story here. We're just looking to understand the tendency for Empire origin stories to take the top spots in all those favorites lists. We could just chalk the popularity of Empire stories up to people liking to play the villain, but most people don't. Statistics show that nearly 95% of players pick the good option when given the choice, and so Tork gives Empire characters the ability to be light side just as Republic characters have the opportunity to be dark side. So there's something more going on here than edgy people enjoying shock and choke options. My own personal favorites are the Jedi Knight and the Sith Inquisitor, which I enjoy about equally. Now, the Knight was the first class I played way back when, so it does have sentimental value, but I also think it has one of the best casts of companions in the game. It feels like Star Wars in a way that other classes don't to me, and it just feels good to be the big hero saving the galaxy. The Inquisitor, on the other hand, is a little goofy at times, admittedly, and it's not everyone's cup of tea, but the voice acting is great, the writing is a lot of fun, and I just enjoy the payoff at the end. So I definitely wouldn't agree that Republic stories are bad. But if I look at the rest of my top picks, they are on the Empire side. So yes, I guess I do think that the Empire stories are, in general, better. So why is that? Well, let's look at a brief, admittedly oversimplified summary of the class stories to see if we can find a clue. Let's start with the Republic stories. As the Jedi Knight, you chase down a bunch of super weapons and then face the Sith Emperor to save the galaxy. As the Consular, after saving the Jedi Order from a plague, you help the Republic keep a group of fractious planets from breaking away and finally face down the Emperor's children. The Trooper. You track down the former members of Havoc Squad who have defected to the Empire. Then you spend the rest of the story preparing for and executing operations against the Empire. The Smuggler. You track down the man who stole your ship, find lost treasure, and then work for the Republic to take down the Empire's underworld army. Now for the Empire stories. The Sith Warrior. You become an enforcer for a powerful Darth, only to be betrayed by him. Then you plot and exact your revenge, the Sith Inquisitor. After surviving your master's attempt to steal your body, you must scour the galaxy for the power to defend yourself against the Dark Counselor's vendetta. As the Imperial Agent, you prove your skill and loyalty by tracking down a terrorist organization. Then you go undercover as a defector, only to be betrayed by both sides. Now you must regain your free will and stop those who took it before they destroyed the galaxy. The Bounty Hunter. You compete and win the Great Hunt, track down a group of high value and near impossible targets, winning fame and fortune, but also a bunch of powerful enemies. Now, the galaxy's most wanted, you must work for a Sith Lord to clear your name. As I said, this is an oversimplification, but it does help illustrate the difference between the two sides. At their core, Empire stories are about our player character and their personal struggles for revenge, survival, for power, whatever. Republic stories are, at their core, about defeating the Empire. Now, I'm certainly not saying that a story about saving the galaxy can't be good, because we all know that it can. 
but the protagonist needs to have a personal stake in the outcome to make the story truly compelling, especially in an interactive medium like games. Our characters on the Empire side have this, while too often our Republic characters don't. Sure, there are moments that could have been used to give this to Republic characters. The Jedi Knight, for example, watches as Orgestin, their former master, is murdered by Darth Angrel, but nothing is made of it, it never comes up again. Then again, at the end of Chapter 2, the Knight is taken over by the Emperor and, we're told, does terrible things under his control, but we never see what they do, we never know what they do, and it never comes up again after the end of that chapter, with the Consular. We're told their mind-shielding ability takes a terrible physical toll on them. In fact, the last person who used it died because of it. But apart from a few people mentioning our characters being pale, nothing comes of it. Then they learn that Seal Bakarn, a mentor figure of sorts, is the first son and they have to take him down, but you learn this only on Karelia, you know, the last planet when the story is almost over. The Trooper Chapter 1 starts off great, taking down the old Havoc Squad, your former team, the ones who betrayed you, and the Republic left you high and dry on Ord Mantell. The Trooper can even say that it's personal. Because of this, I think this is the Trooper's best chapter. It's kind of downhill from there, though. You do have the Jaxo choice, but again, like so many of the others that I've already mentioned, it comes and then it goes. After that, it's kinda just the trooper doing their job. The smuggler probably comes the closest to having this personal stake. You spend all of chapter one listening to that creep Skavik taunt you at every turn until you finally dump him into a black hole. Then they learn they've been betrayed by Darmus and Dodonna for two whole chapters, giving them plenty of motivation for taking them down above and beyond it's the right thing to do. Even so, that revelation comes just before Karelia. You know, again, the end of the story, when there's nothing else left to do. So all the Republic stories had the potential to be just as personal as the Empire stories, but most of those threads were dropped and forgotten. Ultimately, Republic stories aren't bad, not by any means, but they are full of missed opportunities to give the main character a more personal stake in their own stories, which I think would have made them more compelling to the people who think they're boring. At least that's my two cents. But what do you think? Do you prefer Empire or Republic stories? Let us know in the comments below and if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe for more stuff just like it. Anyway, as usual, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.